was valued at more than $100 billion. They were among the worst hit in the pandemic. So how did they still manage to go IPO at such a great price? In this video, we will try to analyze Airbnb business model, which can maybe help to get the IPO explained so that by the time Airbnb hires again, your understanding will increase your chance of getting selected and also help you to make a great decision on whether or not to join them. Airbnb went IPO on 10th December. They priced the stock at $68 per share, but once the market opened, so many people went for it and the price went up to $146 per share. Suddenly, the whole world is talking about Airbnb IPO and whether they should invest in Airbnb stocks. The CEO Brian Chesky went speechless at the news when he heard how much the stock price has gone up to. What do you think about that number and the potential uh, that you're leaving billions of dollars on the table? That's the first time I've heard that number. Um, that is, that's a, I, you know, when we, in April, we raised money. With so much of capital coming in, we can almost be certain that after Airbnb IPO, they will start hiring again. The question is only where, when, what, and how many? Well, their recruitment site is still very quiet, although just a week ago they posted an APEC recruiter job. This is not yet a signal of their hiring though, because the role seems to be one focusing on Japan and Korea market, to most likely a replacement role and not really for expansion. So actually, I would be surprised if they had started hiring by now. After all, they have just laid off 1,900 people, 25% um, of their workforce in May this year, right? And uh, COVID right now is still in force in most countries, plus vaccination distribution will be a long process. Airbnb also has to wait for the dust to settle before they announce their next move. But did they actually have any plan for how to use this money? And if they do have a plan, should you start to consider, you know, in the future, you should join them or not? In their IPO filings, the proceedings sections where companies talk about what they will use the money for, Airbnb was being very vague about it. They talked about working capital, operating expenses, and capital expenditures, which just means that they plan to use the money to run the business, so it could include anything, right? Actually, talking about business, many would wonder, Airbnb is so badly hit in the pandemic, so just how did they manage to go IPO and uh, still have the trust from the market? In case you didn't realize, Airbnb is now valued to be worth more than Booking.com and a few times of Marriott Group. So what is the secret? Hi, here's Yoyo, -Yo, your career coach. I used to work as a headhunter and help thousands of people to find jobs. I hold an MBA from a top business school and have worked in Fortune 500 technology companies in the business departments. I can help you in your job search process, tailoring your career strategy, resume, and interview preparations, targeting the world's best companies. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and reach me at youyouchannel.com. On the peer-to-peer -peer rental platform of Airbnb, more than 4 million people have hosted around 825 million guests from 2008 till now. Airbnb's business model charges service fees to both hosts and guests, meaning if you are the host, you will be charged around 3% and then if you are a guest, you will be charged around 14.2% um, and that is on every completed booking. So it was becoming so popular that so many people have even bought property just for Airbnb business because they are hoping to generate passive income, that magic word, right? But then when international travels dropped to a minimum, so did uh, Airbnb's international business and hosts are suffering and Airbnb as well. 
So facing this challenge, uh, what they did really well was uh, were two things. One is they shared their non-core business, and the other one is to focus on domestic rental. When we say that they shared non-core business, um, it was not that all pleasant, right? Closing down non-core business means closing services, offices, and firing people. And that's what we saw, right? In May, there was a huge round of retrenchment. But the CEO managed this layoff in such a fantastic way. It could have been a PR disaster, but instead he has won so many hearts. And all this also won the support of investors because at the end of the day, investors actually invest in teams and people more than anything else. The second thing they did was they focused on domestic rental, which also makes sense, right? After all, we are all craving to travel. And if we really can't go to another country, we'd like to go to the suburbs. Or if we really still can't, how about just living in someone else's house and let's change our lives for a while, right? The numbers on domestic rental keeps growing. And here's what you can see on the number. Domestic rental can keep them afloat for now, and investors are banking on them to fly up to the sky again when life goes back to normal and we all can travel again. But we shouldn't forget the fundamentals as well, right? So when we look at fundamentals, Airbnb does have a competitive edge. There are competitors like Booking.com. They also came into the peer-to-peer -peer rental space, but Airbnb has its unique edge with uh, far more inventory listings because they have built one of the strongest brands and they spend way less marketing dollars than Booking.com and Expedia. Um, they also see much more organic search. But at the same time, Airbnb's business also faces another risk because hotels are fighting back and the regulations and government sanctions and all that are against them. And in many parts of the world, including Singapore, Airbnb has been made illegal. So the million dollar question really is, will Airbnb still grow? Well, it will grow, but how fast is the question, right? So the numbers were actually not great. Their growth already slowed down in 2019 and the loss was increasing. For that, they said they used the money to invest on technology, but what's visible is their profitability is negative and if you compare that to their peers is spending so do they actually have a plan now with the ipo right if we go back to their ipo document they also talked about potentially using the money to buy business products offering and technologies blah blah the fact is actually they didn't know they'll get so much money hi this is yo yo I hope you have subscribed to my channel. If not, there's a red button here. Ending up with two billion more than what they had asked for, they will have to figure out what they will do with that. Of course, there are a few obvious possibilities for what they will do next. One is continue to grow the peer-to-peer -peer rental business. Two is growing domestic rental business. Three, expanding business lines related to their earlier motto, travel like a human, or the later motto, belong anywhere. Lastly is to expand business lines beyond travel. Looking at the 2019 performance, Airbnb's current rental business may not be able to generate the kind of growth for investors. And even to support the rental business, their learning from COVID will be to keep a lean workforce as much as possible and automate as much as possible so that they can increase profitability, which is something they have to focus on now. That all means to invest in technology and not so many of humans except for those who are able to support the technology. The real growth of Airbnb will have to come from expansion of business lines related to travel and beyond travel. Experience is what they tried and showed momentum on but didn't take off during COVID. Airbnb already has become the largest platform for room listings, so it has significant scale advantage comparing to its competitors, including the more traditional hotels. 
So with such scale advantage, they can totally attack any sector in the sense, especially like ticket booking, car rental, or provide services like lounging, food, insurance, medical services. And they can also go into business beyond travel. There's huge room for imagination, and that will be where the bulk of hiring comes from eventually. But if they hire, is it going to be a good time to join them then? Well, too bad the best time to join a listed company should be before its IPO and so that you can attain the kind of financial freedom very quickly and it's perhaps too late now. But sometimes it's better late than never. So of course, for the majority of us, we don't only want to look at the monetary aspect, but also to grow our career and become more valuable in the market. This is by the same logic as investment, and we are investing with something more precious than money, at least a few years of our life. On Glassdoor, Airbnb still has an unbelievable high rating with most, most saying great culture and great people. So this is not unfounded as well, um, because during the retrenchment, Airbnb actually showed a lot of care to their employees, including giving equity to everyone, including those who didn't have equity to start with, so that everyone leaving the company became a shareholder. And they also give generous severance pay and also health insurance for a year. They made their recruiters become job placement team and they also hired career transition services to help their leaving employees to find job and settle down again. So most beautifully, uh, which is also the, the most cited, that people get to keep their own laptop. All these posted around $137 million on their accounts and it shows up as restructuring charges. But this is indeed money well spent because they, they, to be fair, they wouldn't have been able to, sell, to sell the, the Apple laptops at a very good price. But with all this, all this money and all this effort, their reputation gets well managed their talent pipelines are secure because people will be open to go back to join them again. Um, and most importantly, it's a great reflection of the company standing up for its values and for what they really care. And looking at their organizational structure, they are probably one of, one of the very few companies that has a VP of employee experiences reporting into the CEO's team. So let's watch how this ship will battle the waves and anchor itself again after the new round of investment and show us its vision. Hi, here's Yu Yu, your career coach. I used to work as a headhunter and help thousands of people to find jobs. I hold an MBA from a top business school and have worked in Fortune 500 technology companies in the business departments. I can help you in your job search process, tailoring your career strategy, resume, and interview preparations, targeting the world's best companies. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and reach me at uuchannel.com.